Alrighty then, welcome back. Um, in Titus chapter 2, verse 1, we read that the older men be sober, reverent, temperate. This is also for the older women, as well as the responsibility of the older woman to teach the younger women, as in verse 4, we read that they may teach the young women to be sober. At first, we may think of sober as in not getting drunk. But in Titus 2, it's not what it means. Um, the Greek word for sober is sofrencio, and it's a verb. Maybe I pronounced it wrong. <laughs> pronounced it in Italian instead of Greek. Um, but it is, again, to restore one senses, to moderate, control, curb, discipline, to hold one to his duty, to admonish, to exhort earnestly. You can see that this is a mentoring type of word, and that is why the verse is directing this to older men and women. Typically, the biblical scholars say this is for the 40 and over folks. In the Strong's Concordance, it is to make of sound mind, meaning figuratively, to discipline or correct, to teach, to be sober. So remember in verse 4 it says directly to teach young women to be sober. That's the whole thing. <laughs> but the older woman in order to do so must first be able to be sober herself. And I just want to let you know this is not intended to be a bondage or a law or what I call the perfect perfect that's in my first video of this series. It should be like a natural growth. It becomes a fruit of the Spirit as one matures with the Father in his, your relationship with Him. It should be a joy, and it should give you that sense of freedom, that freedom away from the bondage of the world, right? Because the world can be full of bondage and chains and yokes. So also I want to add, because sometimes people tend to become finger pointers, and it's not, this whole thing to be sober is not meant to bash another over the head with, saying you're not sober, or to place judgment, or to condemn another person. What it means is it's, it's in complete contrast to the disrespectful lifestyle. We're supposed to be contrary to that. And one, you know, this is good for us to live like this, right? This is like a life advice. We should be able to learn to think clearly, right? And not easily angered and undisciplined lifestyle, drunk, loud, bolsterous, slanderers, and these things have also crept into the church. Okay, so in 2 Timothy 3, 1 through 7, it says, But understand this, that in the last days there will come times of difficulty. For people will be lovers of self, they will be lovers of money, proud, arrogant, abusive, disobedient to their parents, ungrateful, unholy, heartless, unappeasable, slanderous, without self-control, brutal, not loving God, treacherous, reckless, swollen with conceit, lovers of pleasure rather than lovers of God, having the appearance of godliness, but denying its power. And at the end of this, Paul admonishes to avoid such people. Why? Because they hinder us in our walk with the Father. So it's important to look around, see who you're hanging out with, who your friends are, right? And if these people are tearing you down and they're like this, it's going to tear you down too. In addition, as Christians, right, we're not to be conformed to this world, but to be transformed 
by the renewal of our minds, by testing that we may discern what is the will of God, what is good and acceptable and perfect. And that's in Romans 12, 2. She's looking for a job, Pat is, and she's dressed for it too. Tastefully, not expensively. Beth, the receptionist, wears a smart wool dress with a zippered plunge neckline. She can see that Pat's pin dot jersey, Peter Pan collar, and side swept beret make her a likely candidate. So Pat gets a come on in from the boss's secretary. It's the big moment. The boss herself, yes, we said herself, is wearing a wine wool dress with a standing dandy collar. Like all the girls' styles, it's by Henry Rosenfeld. Pat makes the grade. She's greeted by Diana and Terry, her new office mates in this drama of full employment. And Diana's tweedy wool plaid draws a stenographic salute. Exclamation point, end quote. Price tags on these office fashions run from $25 down to $12.95. They not only look nice to us, they're a good investment. Uh, how's that again, Pat? So, as I mention all the time, <laughs> our world is growing darker and darker, and it's a society, right? Our social construct. That's what we're passing through in this world. We're just here for a moment. And so, in that process... How can we learn not to let things get to us? How do we not get angry at other people? And so when we're abiding with the Father, it helps us put our eyes on the right place. So in Ephesians 6, 10 through 18, it says, finally, so like, therefore, finally, <laughs> be strong in the Lord and in the strength of his might. Put on the whole armor of God that you may be able to stand against the schemes of the devil. For we do not wrestle against flesh and blood, but against rulers, against the authorities, against the cosmic powers over this present darkness. And he's saying present darkness. Against the spiritual forces of evil in the heavenly places then he says therefore which is what is it there for question mark well take up the whole armor of God that you may be able to withstand in the evil day and it and it's not just like the evil day the one terrible great and last day it's the evil day all these days are evil days right so we're walking through this. So we have to put on that armor daily. And having done all to stand firm, okay? Stand, therefore, having fastened on the belt of truth and putting on that breastplate of righteousness. And that scripture goes on. <clears throat> Excuse me. So when I first started this channel, some of the first videos I put up was putting on the whole armor of God. And I did that because, <clears throat> excuse me, that's also a foundation for our walk. And it's an important one. So I would recommend going back and finding those videos. Okay? So as older adults, we cannot teach the younger ones, or as younger adults, we cannot teach our children if we are succumbing to the schemes of the devil, right? So, in 1 Peter 5.8 it says, Be of sober spirit. What is that? Be on alert. Why? Because your adversary, the devil, prowls about like a roaring lion seeking someone to devour. So family, even the enemy wants to destroy your homes your family, and your very life. It is important for us to stay alert. 
And I'm not saying because I give these devil seeking around, seeking whom he may devour, <laughs> it doesn't mean I'm saying to go devil hunting, right? People can go to the extreme on that. Ah, oh, a demon was this and a demon was that and oh, no, 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 no. If you are a child of the Most High God, that's part of the faith building, the knowing, the fellowship. You have to believe that. And I believe if you seek first the kingdom of God and his righteousness, then all these things will be added unto you. So keeping our eye on the Lord. Now, how do you do this? You bask in the word. And what's interesting here is I know this is longer. What is the word? The word is Yeshua. It's Jesus. That's the word. That's the flowing river water. As in John chapter 1, verses 1 and 2, it says, In the beginning was the word, and the word was with God, and the word was God. Mm -hmm.